So this is the Kenwood Chef model A901. Christmas is coming, the geese are getting fat, and the food mixes are smoking. In fact, this one really was smoking. So that's manufactured in England by the Kenwood Manufacturing Company Limited, Havant, Hampshire. So a friend brought this over because it actually was smoking. And uh, to get access to the components, get in here, and then we have to undo two screws under there. Uh, a couple of cross heads, take those out, we'll be able to drop this forward then. And now we can see what looks like the offending problem. There's uh, probably an X2 capacitor that's <laughs> lost some of its plastic. Um, I'll just have to check what wire goes where, but um, I think this, you can see which other components may be a bit brown, if any. But it's probably probably going to be a case of just changing out these two capacitors. Part of it down there. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it looks as if it might have gone bang. <laughs> With this out of the way, we can see that the the mains comes in here, uh, neutral, assuming the plug's dried the right way round, goes to one side of the capacitor. The live comes in here and goes to this switch here, which is part of the on-off mechanism. It's then wired through this reset button which I'm assuming is thermally operated because it's in series and then it goes to the other side of this capacitor so this capacitor is an X2 capacitor and is sat directly across the mains this particular one is uh, 0.15 microfarad looking further down inside there's a capacitor here, a resistor and another resistor over there. Um, a three-legged semiconductor device um, and this whole mechanism moves up and down. Um, This is obviously part of the speed controlling circuitry. I don't think I need to know anything more about this. We'll probably replace this capacitor because it's going to be as old as that one. But the resistors both look intact. And if when we reassemble this with the new capacitors in, it works, I'm not going to worry about the rest of it. I'm not going to worry about it now anyway. The fact that this is across the mains and has failed, it's probably just due to its age. As it's not part of the controlling circuitry, it probably won't have done any damage to this because it's, it's in the circuit before any of this exists. And if some of this was failing, it wouldn't have affected this capacitor anyway because it's not in series, it's in parallel. just waiting for the iron to heat up 
And then I've got the parts that I'm going to replace uh, this capacitor and this capacitor with. I've got these from uh, CPC Farnell. Looks like a straightforward. Just pop that in there into that space. Have a go when the iron's warmed up. Just tin the iron with a bit of juicy lead based solder. See if I can get that to flow on there. Yep, yeah, does seem to be moving. This might be a bit tricky, it might be easier just to cut the leads off. A bit simpler, I think. So I'm working around a light and a camera. this into here Put that on there Oop, you can't see make a nice good mechanical fitting fixing and then uh, just give it a dab of solder. Go get the solder in. <laughs> get the solder in. This one. Look at this one now. Yeah. I think I'll do the same as last time, it was certainly a lot easier. Smell of warm plastic. I do hate the smell of warm plastic at any time of the day. Sort of old flux and warm plastic. Unfortunately, this capacitor that goes in here has come with really short legs. Um, so maybe I would have been better off leaving those bits on. But what I'm going to do is just to attach 
some extra leg to this and just make it stretch across. No, oh, you can't really see, but uh, yeah, that was in there. And it's um, legally challenged. This second capacitor, unfortunately, the leads are too short, it's obviously, for a PCB mounting. Uh, so I'm going to pop a little bit extra wire on. I've got a bit of stiff wire that should hold it in place. So I'll just make a loop to go around this. And then... tighten this on itself because the, these legs are quite uh, soft and will easily deform and I don't want to put any pressure on the point where the leg attaches to the capacitor. So I just uh, make a reasonable mechanical connection by Wrapping it around with my 81s and um, I'll solder this up. Ow, that's hot. Yep, that's okay. As I say, these are quite soft legs, so just be a little bit careful with the bending of the leg afterwards. That's all I need. Do the same again on the other side. Squeeze this round. This time don't hold on to the wire because it gets hot. Yes, it's got hot. There we go. Ready to insert. nice mechanical connection. Stop it from sliding off. Go on, man. 
closely. Terminal's a bit more rickety than the others. Solder on that. Very nice. Only better if you're right. I want to give it a clean down inside here because it's full of A dust and B exploded capacitor and what also looks like uh, carbon off brushes maybe I don't know but dust anyway and dirt so I'll give it a quick clean get the worst of it off Hopefully, though, nobody's going to see the inside of this for quite a few more years. Oh. And now there's dirty fingerprints everywhere. I might be trying to get off the residue of last year's Christmas cake, I'm not sure. Right, almost cleaner than it was. Okay, so to, re to release the catch on the side, to get that to come out to its maximum position. Right, bring that up. A bit more cleaning required. Yeah, I need to wipe all my fingerprints off anyway because I don't want anyone tracing this repair back to me. Well, there's not quite enough lead there, so I have to bring that forward. And then I've lost the bracket. There it is. Um, Fair enough, the screws over there, just here. That one's a little bit tight, almost as if I've just cross threaded it. I'll to check that, see what I've done. Yeah. It is just tighter. Oh, 
which is probably not a bad thing because there'll be quite a lot of uh, vibration playing. Okay, shall we see if this works? Well, it comes on. Let's try warp factor 8. To 11 on the dial. Well with the switch on test complete let's hope this 37 year old beast will go on to provide many more cakes and puddings for the whole family.